Um, next up, we have John Kopp. He's a drift netter and set netter from Bristol Bay, and we're looking forward to seeing what he's got for us here. Welcome, John. Well, let's start with this. You know what that means? No pebble mine. Mosquitoes. Set netting on a shoestring west side at the Quijack. First storm of the season turns my fancy new mountaineering tent into a twisted pile of junk. Standing half naked in freezing rain, salesmen's soothing words blow away in the howling wind. If this tent is strong enough for Everest, damn it, it's good enough for Bristol Bay. Time for plan B, climb the cliff to the tundra. Miraculously, find an old abandoned cabin. Tiny Eskimo-sized doors bid us welcome with dishes, stove, fuel, rickety outhouse dangling 90 feet above the bay. Dawn sun wheeling glaucous wing gulls. My crew sleeps soundly. High school boys, two brothers whose passion is fist fighting with each other. Me. Head to the outhouse, teetering on half-rotten two-by-fours. Best part is sitting there with the door open, gazing at the shimmering bay. Total bliss for 60 seconds, until suddenly and silently two fighter jets. So close, I can see the pilot's face and his hand raised to wave before vanishing in half a second. I know what's next. A massive sound tsunami slams the outhouse like a bull charging elephant, rocking wildly back and forth. My entire life passes before my eyes. Finally, the outhouse stops rocking, shudders once, settles. Got lucky this time, but now I truly need a bath. Explore the tundra, find the perfect pristine lake. Strip, dive in, surface with a shout, sit in the shallows, mesmerized by the beauty around me, like an ancient Zen monk. Certainly, I found nirvana. Then I spot it across the pond, a pile of dirt and branches that just shouldn't be there. Swim over, discover blood everywhere. Hidden caribou carcass, brown bear tracks as big as my head, so fresh that water is still seeping, seeping in. Running full speed across the tundra, I stop, turn, laugh, see, all my clothes still back at the pond. Back at the shack, the kids roll in the dirt, fighting over our last piece of licorice. Wide-eyed, mouths agape, like they've never seen a naked man before. I just say, damn lucky there's no mosquitoes. The girl with cobra tattoos. First set in that season, buy a skiff and nets over the phone. Hire two high school kids who luckily know even less than I do. Before heading north, take my three-year-old to the park, push her on the swings and do pull-ups. 10 pull-ups, pathetic. Well, no turning back now. Get a ride on a tender from Igigig to the west side where I hear you can scrounge abandoned set, night, set net sites. Rain spitting cloud cover night, Skipper lowers us overboard at 2 a.m. into a hostile wind churn chop. Leaning over the rail, his head haloed by the deck light like a saint in a medieval cathedral, cigar smoke swirls around him, a dark omen. Says, this ain't such a good idea. Oh, I took a bearing off your radar, I naively reply. He laughs, shakes his head, not knowing how much I trust my old Boy Scout compass. All right, boys, away we go. Four hours later, the little outboard still humming, panicked, freezing kids now positive that I'm certifiably insane. Clouds break at dawn, shaft of golden light lands directly on our skiff. A hundred yards dead ahead, the little creek that I was aiming for, right on target. As far as I can see, looking up and down the beach, there isn't another human for miles. Well, little did I know there aren't any fish either. 
We fish and fish and fish, pull net, clean net, set net, again and again and again, here, there, everywhere. Then one day, a guy in a passing drift boat hands a letter to one of the kids. Oh my God, my girlfriend's pregnant. Kid hitches a ride on the drift boat, heads for home, pupils wide as a goose owl, leaving me and his brother, who wonders why in God's name he ever came to Bristol Bay. Me feeling pretty bad, since I know his dad abandoned the family. The kids had a tough life, and now is going home with an empty wallet. Dreams die hard on Bristol Bay. How about this, I say. We fish one last day, you get to keep every single fish. Really, he asks? Really, I reply. Fierce southwester blows all night. Huge waves smack the shore over and over. We lay out net early. Once it starts to pop, it just doesn't stop. 10,000 pounds of shiny bright sockeye. Kid says, Whirly, you got to keep your word? Yes. Why? Adults never keep their word. Well, because it's the right thing to do. Kids can't stop grinning, 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 and more grinning. He's not going home as a bum, but as a man, a fisher man. Back of the canary, a little skiff pulled up on the beach. Tall blonde in black leather jacket and tight jeans saunters up, a purpose in mind, I can tell. How did you do, she asked. Me and the kid laugh. Great, we say in unison. You're lying. I watch you clowns all season through the binox. Tell me the truth. Well, 16,000 pounds. She laughs until she nearly pukes. You're even more pathetic than I thought. Let me ask you something. Did you fish five shackles? Did you fish at night? Did you fish close periods? Same answer, no. Blonde reaches out, grabs me by the collar, pulls me right to her so close I can see tattooed cobras crawling up her neck, ready to gobble those cute little golden earrings. Don't you realize you dumb turd, she says, blowing perfume in my face. This is Alaska. She lets me go, walks over and kicks the skiff. Quang, nice metal sound. Not bad, she says. Tell you what, I'll buy it off you. Well, I figure, me being them turd and all, I might as well sell it to her for twice what I paid for it. So the kid flies home with 10,000 bucks in his pocket, still grinning. Me, happy as can be, back at the park, pushing my three-year-old on the swings, I knock off 50 pull-ups. And I can tell you this absolutely for sure, trust your old Boy Scout compass it will lead you home every time. <clears throat> Egg Island. Tattered scent net, nothing in it but ghost fish. Seasons played out. Warm sun splashes silver on the Igigik River. Cool breeze keeps down the mosquitoes. Blue black clouds dance along the horizon like hip-hop teenagers. Gull cries beckon me to Egg Island. Haven't had an omelet in two months, nor bath either. Brain on fire with omelet mania. I wade through Egg Island muck, but I'm too late. Empty nests everywhere. A mob of angry gulls mob me nonetheless. Peck ears yank out tufts of hair, drop a rain of gut bombs, noisily rouse me off their island. Feeling sorry for myself, I stagger aimlessly across the tundra, convinced I'm insane to be a set netter. Sensing vulnerability, a pair of angry, long-tailed Jaegers take up where the gulls left off. I run to escape sharp beats and, and claws, stumble, trip, fall face down in the wet tundra. Overhead, Jaegers squeal and wheel, triumphantly convinced they've killed me. Roll over on my back, hands behind my head, watch the sky then realize I'm not alone. Slowly turn my head 60 yards away on a little ridge. Take them six seconds to get here. Enormous golden mane bear, the one we call Schwarzenegger, who steals fish out of my nets whenever he feels like it. Watching me with a puzzled look, wonder, wondering what kind of pathetic, shirt-torn, bird-shit-covered life form he's discovered. Finally, ambles off pigeon-toed, remembering that set netters taste terrible. 
Frankly, it'd be far less painful to get eaten by that brownie than to tell my wife yet another crappy season. Like a madman, I stand, raise my arms to the sun in laughter, knowing that given the choice, this is the only place I want to be. All right. It's the last one. It's short. Charlie, all alone on a windblown Quijack beach, standing on a tall mound the tide can't reach. Just me, a bear, in a sad pile of torn up net, wondering why that darn plane isn't here yet. Then that greedy bear waddles by, his belly fat and round, stuffed with my net ripped fish, two of which he just left on the ground. Finally, here comes Charlie in a patched up orange Veronica, the little plane coughing, spitting, and wobbling like his girlfriend, Veronica. Plane skitters past, turns, shuts off with a roar. Only sounds now are screaming gulls and waves kissing the shore. Charlie jumps down, yawns, stretches, points to the nets with a grin. It's obvious to him the pickle I'm in. So he gives me a lift to Igigik, far down the coast, tells me his life story without even a boast. Flew B-52s over Haiphong and Hanoi, dodged silver missiles streaking across the sky, thinking about the people below who soon would die. He quit the war and got a job with big pay, flying 737s from New York to LA. At first, the gig was the source of great joy, but every time he took off, he pointed the nose towards Hanoi. So he duct taped an aging Aronica he bought for eight grand, flew himself north to this magic land, and says to me, tell ya, I never felt better than when helping a needful set netter. Mind if I ask what we're hauling on this flight? A drum of avgas, 60 blasting caps, and four cases of dynamite. We wing past Johnson Hill, then down to Red Bluff. I'm naively assuming our landing won't be too rough. But the beach at Igigit comes up at us way too fast. I cross my fingers and hope these bald tires are going to last. As we hit a big rock and bounce up high, I catch movement out of the corner of my eye, hear a strange sound, turn my head, crane my neck, see blasting caps bouncing all over the deck. I close my eyes, try to remember the words of our father. Charlie says, I know what you're thinking, don't bother. We're safe as sardines in this old orange crepe. Besides, on Bristol Bay, human destiny is ruled entirely by fate. When we settle down and Charlie feathers the prop, I still can't quite get these darn heart flutters to stop. Charlie laughs, punches my arm to give me some slack. That's nothing, he says. We're hauling three drunks on our way back. You're just like me, he continues, never been happy in your life, but I advise you, my friend, never tell that to your wife. <laughs> so uh, once again, far more important than my poems are Bristol Bay, is Bristol Bay. So please do what you can to stop Pebble Mine. Thank you. <laughs>